Hey there folks, my name is Tommy, the Digital Creation Specialist over at the Bathurst Clark Resource Library. Welcome to another Steam video, and today we're talking about computers. So computers these days come in all sorts of flavors. We've got desktops, laptops, Chromebooks, tablets, and even smartphones count as computers. But what makes them tick? Do you know? What goes on inside these devices to make them work? Well, no matter the device, they all share three main components to help them work. The CPU, the memory, and a motherboard. And today, it's all about the brain. So, this right here is a desktop CPU. If you've ever seen inside of a computer, you probably wouldn't have seen one of these, as they're usually covered by a big fan. That's because there's a lot of electricity running through these, and they can run pretty hot. Now, CPU stands for Central Processing Unit. This chip is the brain of the computer. It receives electricity to perform calculations, create instructions, and send them out to the rest of the computer, much like how our brain controls the rest of our body. We measure how quickly a computer can, can do calculations in hertz, or one cycle or operation per second. Computers are so fast these days though, we usually rate them in megahertz or 1 million operations per second, or gigahertz, 1 billion operations per second. That's a lot of operations. Now, these are known as measuring a CPU's clock speed. Fun fact, the computer that sent the Apollo 11 lunar lander had a clock speed of just 2.048 megahertz. And these days, the latest iPad has a CPU capable of running at 2.34 gigahertz. And it's quad core, which means there's four of those working on the same chip. Now, multi-core CPUs are a relatively new thing, but we'll get to that. Did you know we've come so far in developing these CPUs that we are nearing the limit on how fast those brains can go? In the early 90s, we would see CPU speeds increase dramatically year over year, and the average home PC was running at around 100 megahertz in about 94, 95. In the year 2000, AMD made the history books with the first commercially available one gigahertz CPU. And eventually, we would see these speeds hit a limit of around three and four gigahertz. Even today, most CPUs don't get any faster than 2.9 or 3.5 gigahertz. That's because electricity can only travel so fast through the wires and through the CPU. If we were to go any faster, it would generate so much heat that these brains would literally melt. To make up for this lack of progress in clock speed, engineers created multi-core CPUs basically fitting more brains inside of a single chip, allowing computers to do more and faster by splitting up the work between multiple brains. But there's so much more history and science behind the CPU, and if you want to learn more, feel free to check out my book list for some interesting reading on the history of the computer. Or, if you're into uh, some internet sleuthing, you can read up on the history on the CPU wars between AMD and Intel. Some great reading. So, join us next time while we'll be delving deep into the concept of memory and storage. Bye-bye.